So a big difference is obviously the, the size of the opening, which is uh, huge. You have a very nice view on uh, 360 and the connection inside outside is, uh, is just perfect. This is achieved, it's a bit different from the 55. On the 55 you have an island galley in the middle. On this boat we achieve that with, uh, with a bar connected to the, to the workshop, worktop of the, of the galley. And, uh, and then the door is sliding through the bar. And two panels on this side to, to shut the boat. But uh, it makes a, a very nice feeling connecting uh, inside outside so you are you are completely connected to the, to the to the life happening in the cockpit while you are cooking preparing the meals you're still part of the discussion so uh, that's very nice uh, it's very different from the 51 as well isn't it because the 51 yeah. is lovely but it's a much smaller axis yeah this more traditional huge. yeah it's yeah. A, that was what we could achieve with uh, the engineering uh, of the carbon bulkheads because uh, obviously this bulkhead has to be carbon because there's very little material in the, in the corners to, to match the load because this boat can be sailing upwind in 40 knots, uh, sailing at 12 knots, beating into the wave, so it has to be strong and stiff. Uh, and uh, the door is more heavy on, the, on this boat than the 51 because there are more uh, heavy panels, uh, more uh, tracks, and uh, all of that is heavy. And this could be achieved by saving weight on the structure of the boat. I will show you the detail of the of the build, but we save lot uh, we saved a lot of weight in the during the construction that we could spend that weight in the in this feature. So you have uh, more vision height, so you can see the horizon even if you are tall. I'm uh, 1.87 and uh, I don't need to bend to see the horizon. Uh, chart table facing forward, of course, because uh, it's where you want to stay uh, when you are on watch in, in bad weather, being able to see on, uh, on 360 what's uh, happening. And uh, of course, uh, all of the chart table can be customized with uh, the electronic you need. But uh, it's not only a chart table, it's also a workplace. You know, many people are uh, sometimes still running the company from the, from the boat and uh, you want a proper space, and not, not even if you're not using paper charts, of course. Um, so the, the galley is, uh, is very, very ergonomic. So uh, it's very easy to cook there. Uh, you could choose from a different, uh, different cook stove. Uh, on this one, uh, he selected uh, both uh, electric and gas cooking for redundancy, which could be nice if you have any electric failure. So uh, storage uh, up there, sli sliding drawers, uh, a place for a garden for aromatic herbs. Uh, you have storage with uh, the different cans to, to store the pasta, rice, etc. Two fridges or freezer, um, and uh, still uh, still storage for bottles uh, in the front. So basically, everything is uh, very accessible. Another benefit difference from the 51: we now have enough room to store things uh, under the floors. So you have uh, you have bins to store ex extra food under the under the seating. That's uh, that's also uh, also storage with uh, large blockers. Table uh, is convertible as well. So uh, it rotate, deploy, raise, or you can lower it and uh, make a bed which would be a very nice feature with, uh, to have a home cinema. Then you would have a screen there that you can deploy and a beamer there, and uh, you would have a good time at anchor. Mm, nice. On the countertop, we have, uh, of course, uh, beans, uh, and uh, a special one for directly to the water for the biological uh, waste. So nice feature to prepare food. Mm. 
there's such a lot of space in here and it's so it's such an integral part of the cockpit as well isn't it you really yeah it's feel a single it space here. yeah yeah and uh, with, uh, with a good connection yeah it's, uh, yeah well, talking of good spaces, let's have a look down in, in the hulls. I guess this is the owner's one, isn't it? Yes, Over here. owner's hull on starboard, usually, okay. is that when it's a three-cabin version. Uh, on four-cabin version, it's uh, usually the opposite. The owner's hull would be on the on both side, but I will give you details. Okay. So, so still, we still have a pantry in the, in the staircase. Oh, uh, yeah. Plenty more storage for the, for the galley. So there you have privacy from a, a sliding door, uh, which will uh, give, close the, the, the staircase and uh, reveal a, a locker there. A big difference from the 51 is uh, the bed are now much lower. On the 51, the bulkhead was uh, uh, 40 centimeters higher because we needed this bulkhead for reinforcement for the hull. So it was a complaint for many owners saying that it was not that easy to access to the bed. So we, we made the reinforcement different, uh, so we, we, we could have much more space for the bed. So you have a <clears throat> 1.6 queen, queen size bed, which could be even increased to king size. If you don't need the extra shelf on the side, it could be 1.8 meters wide. Uh, opening in the back, large window on the side so you have a perfect view on the on the water and uh, it's uh, unobstructed uh, compared to the first Outremer from uh, 30 40 years ago uh, the space was much more uh, closed with many many more bulkheads so now the modern materials give us the ability to keep the stiffness and, uh, and a more open feeling mm -hmm. there we worked a lot on this boat on the access to the systems. So, for example, you have uh, the main fuse in the, in, in the hull. It's just a panel which is just scratch. And uh, so you can access all the fuse very, very easily within a minute. What do we have under the floorboards here? So, also access to, to different systems, uh, water, plumbing, but it's uh, obviously also storage. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of volume. So many, many owners have uh, uh, plastic boxes. Uh, so you can store things and keep it out of the water if, any, if there's any water in the hull. You could see there all the, the switches uh, uh, for, the, for the water circuit. You could see everything is labeled and uh, you have cold and hot water system. So it's very easy to, to operate the boat and to, to check anything. If you have any leak somewhere, you can close the circuit very, very easily. Everything is accessible. No, nothing is hidden. Um, nothing can be changed. If you need uh, 20 years later to access a system to install a pump or whatever, uh, you have cables and access to, to everything. You could see we have an aluminium frame under the floor to support the floor. So the floor, they are sandwich panel. They are still very light, but they don't make any noise uh, because they are independent from the structure. That's, I think, the, one of the most interesting features in an Outremer is uh, the balance between the structure of the boat, where everything is laminated on the hull, and the, the accommodation, which are independent block, which are not touching the structure. And that's why the boat is very silent when you sail. You, you never heard any creaking, cracking sound. Uh, the doors are always uh, closing and uh, the, the drawers uh, don't, don't move also. So there's a decent amount of, uh, of storage. Uh, it's not as big as uh, the big production cat, but we feel that's enough space for, for most people. In the owner's hull, you have the, the, the cabin aft, uh, the bed aft, plenty of storage in the middle. So it's a huge wardrobe. Uh, that's where you have the space for the 
for the washing machine you could have a, a five kilograms washing machine there that's the case for the daggerboard and as you could see it's not too much protruding in the in the hull and uh, Remember when I said that uh, the boat is engineered to face a huge load and uh, that's what this shelf is for. Of course you can put things in it, but it's also uh, an important reinforcement to hold the case of the dagger board. Mm. Let's swap places with you, get you going to the head and yep. show me what's up there. I should just stand back here. So the bathroom, it's, uh, it's a huge bathroom in a boat. Many people are surprised to see so much space and they, they didn't Im imagine that uh, you could have a, such a big bathroom. Uh, if you have a four cabin version, that would be a cabin and uh, a double bed and the, ca the, the bathroom would be in the middle. But you have a, a full size shower, you know, you can be, you can be tall, there's uh, plenty of, smell, of space, a small seat, you have a window on the side, you have an opening window there, which is nice to make an air vent through the, through the hull. Toilet is uh, usually electric and uh, still uh, still uh, storage lockers and storage in the in the bathroom. There's not many toilets you come across that have such a good view. Yes. <laughs> yes, toilet with a view. That's uh, that's precious. A view <laughs> and the swimming pool. So let's uh, move to the, okay. the porthole. Uh, so this front cabin is, a, is an interesting part because that's what we call the MFS for my free space. We, you have the ability to have five different possibilities there. So this is a standard cabin, which is a simple double cabin. As you could see, another difference from the 51, the, the, the width of the bed is uh, much more, you have 20 centimeters more than the 51, which was hardly a, a double cabin, but uh, two adults can sleep there very well. Um, among the possibilities, you could have uh, the, the, the favorite we are making the most, is what we call the combo, where you have an, uh, an office, a desk, uh, on, the, on the exterior side, with a seat and a very nice view while you are working. But on the, on the inside, you have a, a folding berth and you have storage in the, in the upper part. So it's a nice combination because very often you don't need that many berths, but it's nice to have a small office. But when you have guests, and it's always very nice to have a, a, an extra berth. Uh, some people have Instead of having extra storage, you could have two berths, two folding berths. Uh, you could have a, a walking dressing room. And uh, this would be because then the port hull might become the, the owner's hull. Because the big difference here is you have, in the, in the port hull, you have separate head and, and shower. So the, the shower, the shower is, is nice also, it, uh, it's big. And the head is aft. It's uh, you. You have a, a sink and uh, and the head and of course uh, an opening hatch. So uh, the the aft cabin is uh, same size than uh, on starboard, uh, with uh, with also uh, his own wardrobe. Of course, forget to mention, but uh, plenty of storage under the bed, which could be accessible under the bed or under the, under the mattresses uh, with, uh, with lattice and uh, which give you a very good quality of sleep. One of, the, one of the things we wanted to improve on the 52 was also the access to the systems. So everything is under reach. Usually what can go wrong on a boat is uh, the electric part. And uh, you see, no, no screwdriver needed, and uh, everything is uh, is very accessible. If you need to fix to to, to change a switch of any or anything. So wide panels, and uh, 
that's also an improvement from the 51. On the 51, the, the aft is very narrow and that's much wider, so you have uh, plenty of space to, to, to work around the engines. Mm -hmm. You can see the mechanical steering system, which is uh, very easy to disconnect if uh, you are stuck with somewhere. You have uh, <coughs> the fuel uh, pre-filter uh, to check if it's not clogged. You have the belt, uh, which is very accessible uh, from the front. You have the, the fresh water pump. You have the connection between the, the two tanks, if you want to connect to one tank or the other, or to feed the, the pump. And of course you have the water maker. You, you don't even need to go down below to, to access it. Uh, you have the, the electric box, uh, which is a, a nice feature because you can connect the batteries together. Um, if one engine battery is dead, you can select the opposite uh, battery so you can start the port engine with a starboard battery. You can even start it with a house battery. Uh, if the both batteries are dead, you, you can use uh, the, the house battery, which is always filled because of the solar panel to start the engines. Uh, and on the subject of batteries, what kind of battery capacity is typical on the 52? Uh, the, the start battery for the engine, which are just used to start the engine, they are 75 uh, amps hour. And um, the, the house battery, it's uh, usually uh, lithium, which is optional, but everybody goes for lithium now. And uh, the standard option is uh, six, uh, 6,000 watts. And you could have even a third and maybe a fourth battery uh, to, increase, uh, to increase the capacity. OK, Matteo, tell us about the the helm position and the sailing area, because that's quite a departure from the 51, isn't it? Yes, on the 51, the, the helm was on the, the bulkhead, on the, the cot roof bulkhead, and uh, we decided to bring it further aft, have this uh, camping system to have multi-position. This allows to, have the, to lower the winches for a better access also. But uh, what's very nice on this boat is a different position to, to control the boat. So, starting from the vertical classical one, with a, a nice post to rest uh, when, it's, uh, when it's bad weather, you have the engine control, you have the autopilot, you have the windlass control under the end, and a perfect view on the four corners. You can see the four corners of the boat from, the, from this position. Um, if you are in, uh, in nice weather and uh, you want to enjoy the sail and the view, you, you bring it on the side and then you will be very close to a feeling on a, on a nice monohull with a perfect view in front of you, perfect view on the sail, and uh, you have a bench that you can even share and uh, enjoy the, the, the feeling at the helm. But my favorite position is, is inside, slightly inside, would be there. From here, you can still steer the boat, control it, still control engine etc but you are just one step from the from the sheets so it's uh, very easy to to steer the boat single-handed but you can also control it from the cockpit so whether you are out up or down you, you you're still controlling the boat and of course in the worst weather you will bring it back completely down close the side fabric of the cockpit and have a perfect view in front of you through the windows. And uh, you, you can be comfortable controlling the boat, seeing all around on 360 and uh, still have a, a perfect touch of the, on the wheel. This isn't the first time you've used this configuration, is it? Either? Yeah, we did it on the 55. And uh, the difference on the 55, you have two wheels because the boat is wide enough for that. So you have two engine control, two wheels, you can choose the, the position. You could have one wheel down and close, the other wheel up, de depending on the shade or the wind is coming from. Um, the difference on the 52, we wanted to keep the possibility of having a tiller. So it's, uh, you have an optional tiller on port side, uh, still with uh, the same seat that uh, on starboard. And then uh, that's uh, the, the classic feeling with the tiller.
Okay. And I think it's uh, very unique uh, on the market to offer the, this, uh, this uh, double uh, possibility. It is. I mean, in, on the face of it, it looks quite interesting. It's intriguing because it's an asymmetric setup for the helm yeah. position. And yet, I suppose in reality, most multi hulls, most cats, have got their steering offset anyway. Yes, because uh, on most cats, it's not that fun steering. Uh, very many boats have uh, hydraulic steering, so you don't have any feel. So you, you, you are in control, but you're not enjoying it. And most of the time, you are under under autopilot. We we are very proud of uh, having one of the very few cats where you have a very good uh, feeling at the end. What is this? So you say a lot of cats are hydraulic steering. What's the steering control here? Oh, it's mechanical. Right. It's only mechanical. So you are in direct connection to the to the, to the rudders. Mm. Okay, good stuff. Okay, let's have a look up on, on the side deck and do a bit of a tour sure. around the boat. Show us around there. So you have bags for the sheets. Uh, the lines are protected under this cover, but uh, of course it's still accessible. We don't like to hide any lines if something is full. It's uh, important to, to stay safe. Control for the for the sheets, for the halyard, for the reefs are from the helm station. So, as you see, the winch are pretty low. So, obviously, they can be electric, which is easier to operate. But you you can still operate it manually if you if you want to to, to keep training. This one is electric, though. Is it, that one's electric. That one's not. Can you have that one electric? Yes, or? of course. Oh, you can. Okay. Yeah. That's another thing. On the 51, the two winches were too close to each other to have two engines. On the 52, they have enough distance so they can be both electrics. Tell me about this sheave here that we see just on, on that side of the winch. What's that for? Yeah, it's a nice feature. We wanted also the feedback from the owners. Uh, they said that they would enjoy controlling the boat on the deck when the weather is nice and you want to, to exercise. It's, uh, it's nice to operate everything here. But when the weather is bad or it's very cold, you can bring the sheets down in the cockpit. So that's what it's made for. So the sheet, for example, the, the sheet of the jib would, would be behind the, be, behind the winch. You bring it in, the, in, in this sheet, down in the cockpit, and you would operate it from the, from the winch in the cockpit, which is electric also. All right. Same and for the main, so you, you have another winch to operate the main. So, you could completely close the cockpit, being completely protected, and still access to the to the sheets, control your sails, and uh, and the, the steering position from the from the cockpit as well. Okay, let's have a look a bit further forwards. Handrail, uh, yeah, on the on the side. There, the the hatches uh, compared to the 51, they are now flush, so. Uh, no damage on your toes. Uh, a big, uh, two very big cell lockers. You, you've seen how huge they are. So there's plenty of room for, for the cell, for the fenders, but also for the toys, uh, paddleboard, uh, kites, uh, whatever, <clears throat> bike, of course. And it's probably difficult to see from the camera, but that that volume goes right the way forward here, doesn't it? It comes right up to here, so it's a huge space. Yes, we still have four different watertight compartments. So you have <coughs> several crash boxes, but uh, you also have a double floor system. So you could basically cut the, the hull in two there. You don't have any drop of water in, really? the, in the living quarters. So it's very important for safety. You know, sailing around the world, there's always logs of, of wood uh, containers in the, in the water. Mm. So yeah, they are huge. Uh, trampoline, several options. Uh, it could be uh, uh, smaller, smaller loops, uh, more comfortable. This one is, uh, is polyester black, uh, lasts longer and looks better on the, on the picture as well. So the main option there is uh, this uh, lounge uh, which is uh, an option which is needed if you want to have a, a Genoa plus Tessel combination. Uh, because uh, the, the standard platform isn't structural, so you can't put load of, uh, of a stay there. 
but uh, this one is carbon reinforced and you see it's uh, it's pretty long as you as I told before to increase the size of the code cells and uh, we we also have this option of an, an extra net to to have a, a safer access uh, if uh, if the the furler is jammed or anything but it's also a nice place to to rest uh, have a nap or watch the dolphins nice so the stay for the for the stay cell is uh, is removable so at the moment it's stored uh, by the mast uh, and you set it uh, so it's a uh, hooked on the stay cell uh, that you you take out when you don't need it so it's easier to tack with the genoa so this right. boat has a Genoa instead of the, the standard self-tacking cells. So it's uh, the stay cell which is self-tacking. Okay. You see on the on this rail. Um, so the difference from the 51 or the 51, the, the mast is step on the deck. So the good thing is you can now enjoy this uh, this front part. We have cushions covering the space. And it's a very nice place to stay when uh, you're sailing downwind, protected from the from the from the wind with the coach roof. Uh, we have an additional winch uh, there for the tensioning the, the stay. Uh, we have control for the for the windlass. The windlass is out. Uh, you have a pass for the for the chain, which could be dropped uh, without touching anything. And uh, still, it's important to see the chain. If uh, if anything is uh, is wrong there, you you can uh, you can access easily. Of course, you have uh, you have steps to to access uh, the coach roof and the and the mast. Uh, on our boat, the the boom is very low, so it's uh, it's very easy to access the the sail. Uh, same if you need to fix something with uh, reefing lines, you don't need to stand and. Uh, being uh, very uh, acrobatic, uh, and you can get right to the back of the back of the boom by yeah, the looks of it. Yeah, of course, because uh, with uh, with a solid bimini which is covered with solar panels, uh, it's a very very safe place to to access, and uh, very easy to operate anything and to fix anything. On this boat, we have uh, extended for the for the boom to to attach to attach the sail uh, a bit further. On the side, so the the sail is stacked more properly when you when you lower it. So on the on the front deck we have a big locker there, plenty of space to store the fenders, the lines, uh, any toy. Uh, you have access to the to the chain, of course, and you have two tanks: one tank for diesel uh, and one black water tank, and that's the same on the, on the other side but uh, leaves plenty of room for the top. Is that a diesel tank on the other side as well? Yes. Or is that where it's diesel? Okay. One on each side. Right, okay. Where are the water tanks? Uh, under the, the aft berth. Oh, okay. Uh, we don't want to store the, the fuel tanks under the, under the berth in case uh, there's a leak for any reason. Right. Uh, it's better and uh, the weight is better centered there for the, for the diesel. Mm. Okay. So this, this side is much the same as the other side, of course. Tell us about the dagger boards, because that strikes me as being, I mean, that's so central to, a central part of Outremer's performance. Yes, we feel it's, uh, it's really important. It makes a difference. It makes a di real difference to, to sail with dagger boards. Um, it reduces the time you spend uh, upwind. You know, uh, many people say, okay, with good, good fixed skill, you, you can sail decently upwind, but uh, sometimes uh, the, the sea is very choppy and the wind is not consistent and uh, the difference can be huge. You could have like 15 degrees difference and that means a lot of hours spent uh, in the worst <laughs> condition for any boat. You know, it's never fun to sail upwind uh, and you want to shorten that time. Uh, what's very special there, I think we are the only cat builder doing that, is uh, usually when you, when you use uh, dagger boards on a cat, most cats with dagger boards, uh, you, will use, you will use it with the top of the board being level with the deck level. So you can use a full eighth of the hull to, to match the side load of the dagger board. We don't do that. 
Uh, on a Nutrimer, the, the head of the board is going, when it's fully down, is going uh, one meter below the deck. So creating a lot of load. So the structure of the, of the case of the dagger board has to be much stronger to face that uh, load. Um, what, what is it for? Uh, just for extra safety margin. When you raise the board, on most catamarans with dagger board, the board is very high up, up the deck and, uh, and that's a lot of windage and that's a foil that was created to, to create uh, a lot of, uh, lot of uh, foil effect. Uh, on our boats, when you raise it, it's not higher than the lifelines and so you reduce the, the windage. In a, in a storm, if you are caught in a hurricane, you don't want to have those boards very high up, which could be, could be risky. You want to reduce the windage as much as possible. So we feel it's very important for safety and that a lot of uh, impact on the, on the labor to, to build the boat and uh, to, to make it strong because of course uh, the, the load on the, on the case is, uh, is huge. And what's the maximum draft then when the board is all the way down? When it's down, it's 2.6 meters. Which is a, which is a good uh, a good base uh, to have a, a solid uh, solid push and yeah. uh, to beat into the wind. Definitely. So we, we can probably match uh, the the wind angle to good cruiser monohull. Uh, not the the best racers, of course, will do will do better. But our VMG will be probably equivalent because we are so much faster even even upwind. So the tiller, on the tiller, which is optional, of course, on the on this side, uh, curves to be more ergonomic, so you can turn it depending on the, the ergonomy you want. But uh, it's a uh, it's a very nice combination of uh, the quality of life we can offer with uh, with this nice uh, living space, but also still having good feeling and good sensation for people who want to really sail the boat. It's a feature that has been familiar across the Utremer range for a long time, maybe since the beginning. Yeah. It, clearly, people like it. Yeah. It's one of the reasons why you would choose an Utremer. You know, you, a very common, uh, is a very common situation is a, a couple where you, you see the guy who say that uh, he needs to switch to a cat for family reasons who have uh, friends, family, wife, kids, they don't want to heal and, uh, and they want a cat. And the guy usually have a poor opinion of, uh, of the cat. He say that uh, we hear uh, nasty things like uh, it's a caravan, it's, uh, sh it doesn't sail, etc. And uh, so the guy say, okay, I'm ready to switch to a cat, but I want a boat that sail. I want a boat with, uh, with a good sensation. Uh, which is safe, which is good performance, good windward ability and uh, safe in bad weather. And uh, yeah, that's what we try to, to achieve. <laughs>